the next what are the things we have to consider like a uh, based uh, we can say as literature okay so we have to keep these things in mind and uh, fixing these things only we have to finally go into our design thing so this is what we are going to see and finally coming into our topic what is the basic requirements for deciding that these motors are suitable for uh, traction application finally the design of traction motor and then we will get into our electromagnetic simulation hands on training right so this is going to be our content to begin with these are the available electrical motors in the field so we if you see it is basic only so we have these many motors available now in in the ac category dc category as well as some special motors so in this if you see for traction application especially for ev as well as hybrid electric vehicle application in dc they are using dc series shunt permanent magnet and separately excited whereas in ac motor you see induction pmsm switch reluctance motor in that we have everything so these are the traction motors uh, so far they have used in the in this field and the role of power electronics came into existence with which the electronically commutated machines came into existence in which we we got some brushless dc motor pmsm switch reluctance motor so these things basically they work on the principle of dc machine but with inverter based commutation rather than of mechanical commutation so these are the available configurations that sectional view of an induction motor srm and pmsm i believe so you have basic idea about it before getting into design why i have used this slide is that why i have used this slide is that you will you know how the diagrammatical layout of the to have just a diagrammatical layout of the motors so here yeah. if you see the leading uh, manufacturers they opt in for these type of here i have listed out the make models and the what are, what are the motors they are used if you see dc motors srm pmsm and induction motor and apart from this now the two wheelers uh, e two wheelers of pv sector are uh, showing their interest on bldc motor also now in the latest models we are using bldc motors also these are some of uh, just to have a brief knowledge about it i'm just showing here next coming here what is the role of design engineer so we need to keep three points in our mind we need to satisfy three things that is first is the regulation and standards what are the regulations and standards fit for a ev vehicle electric vehicle next oem that is original equipment manufacturers for uh, the manufacturers they they have certain standards and they need to fulfill it and moreover they also uh, worry about the cost and these things so we have to take care of that also cost and quality of the product next because we can fulfill the standard okay you they, you can fulfill the standards and regulation but thing is that the quality and these things uh, we have to see as well as the cost everything and finally the consumers flexibility so according to the consumers needs only we have to fix in with our these things now you need to know about the term called homologation so it is nothing but the approvals required for the vehicles prior to marketing and sales so when whenever you are designing anything you need to have an approval before it is getting marketing and you are approving it for sales so this is called as homologation so we need to do this for even our uh, ev motors as well as uh, all the equipment all the components and all the equipment present within the ev we need to do that so especially as a design engineer we cannot tell like uh, i have designed a perfect uh, motor and i have done this so before that we need to go in for these things also why i am insisting this means before designing or starting any design procedure for any application it is very necessary that in that particular field we need to go through these things actually what they need and when where we need to stick on to it so that is the point we need to know because as a, for for example i can say maybe your aim is to reduce the uh, vehicle weight so in order to reduce the vehicle weight if you are doing any design structure variation or any materials which you are using uh, is to be of less uh, less weight or something like that obviously it has to meet the test and standard so we need to check that also so we instead of going in for just like reducing reducing the weight instead of going like without any knowledge about that first we need to go through these things and fix on to it 
accordingly we can see fix our boundaries so that is the thing we need uh, i need to convey over here for your knowledge these are few homologation agencies in india i have uh, it is available in the website on the government website only from the government website only i have taken this so these are the few homologation agencies that is icat garc natrax and uh, national institute for automotive inspection maintenance and training see, see wherever you design any vehicle or something like that you have to give it to them and they certify it and then it is coming to the market as well as so this, this is the procedure so what i finally convey from this slide is that when you go there your design is going to be approved by them or this thing only so before that it is better in order to create a less number of iteration and production cost what we can do is that before going in for design procedure first we can go into this field this regulation and some everything and we learn it we study it and we stick on to it and then we start our design procedures so that whenever see uh, now all are uh, interested like any mncs or any uh, manufacturer something like that they are not ready to invest many uh, more amount on r and d so they are uh, now very much very particular about reducing the r and d cost so instead of making more trials they need to want the first trial itself as the best trial and the correct one so for that reason only first we need to go in for this and then we come into our field and then we design it and whatever knowledge we have according to that we can implement it and we can do that yes so this is what i need to convey from this before going into design what you need to do that this thing next so in india we have the central coming to regulation and standards again in india we have central motor vehicle rules that is cmvr and ri for certification and everything what do they actually they do compound approval component approval component fitting to vehicle system approval whole vehicle type approval so everything they do they only certify whatever you do instead of that we uh, that is what we need to go through their regulations and everything because you are going to see um, uh, let me take my example itself see i am an electrical engineer so if i want if i have to design a motor i always stick on to my theories within which i found in my compound itself and with that i fix this could be a best motor but who knows that will not serve better for a ev application that may serve best for any pumping application or something like that right so be being whatever engineer you me when whenever you are getting into the design of motor or drive design then we need to go we need to go in for their regulation their standards how do they certify what is their needs that is very much required so only i have uh establish this ri and uh, these things in the here in this slide and if you see what are the standards we need to follow we need to follow bias standards as well as aia standards so we, we always go in for that automotive industry standard that is aias so coming to motors and drive power train these two standards that is aias 038 and aias 038 uh, second revision so these two standards tells about the electric power train vehicle construction and functional safety requirement and here you put the requirement of vehicle with regard to specific requirements for electric power train so these two regulations will talk about our our work here now when we uh, now in this workshop what we are going to study it they tell about these things similarly whatever you want to design right for example battery or something like that they have they do have their own uh, as well as you can design for charging stations also if you are doing any algorithm developing any algorithm everybody is having their own standards and regulations just we need to fix on to their regulation and then we have to come here and finally the category whatever uh, motor you are going to design for example the vehicle has more categories in that category l m and n if you see the light motor vehicles and these things like e rickshaw and then uh, two wheelers and then high uh, four wheelers and everything so you have to fix it with the uh, we uh, you have to see under which category this vehicle is following for example for which application you are going to design the motor and they do have their own power rating requirement so within that power rating requirement itself we need to go so that is the main ob uh, objective before going into design so this is what i i need to just convey to you all here next coming to the main point that is uh, what are the considerations we need to do okay so first vehicle characteristics vehicle characteristics means it should be of which size weight or how, how much it can overload and aerodynamics 
crucial vehicle characteristics will come into this field here using this you can determine the speed torque and power requirement of your motor based on these things only you you will be fix, uh, fixing your speed torque and power requirement okay it helps to understand the effect of operating conditions of the vehicle next these are driving cycles so this is the main input to your ev that is how you are going to where you are going to drive your uh, vehicle how in which pattern it, it is going to run based on that also if you want to do any design adjustments or any design compromises you can go in with that so that it will be suitable for the it will be helpful for your approval stage so this is very much important so uh, in the last week or before 10 days only we need, we i came to know that even for state they do maintain a driving cycle nowadays in uh, government so this it is also very very important based on the for based upon the driving cycles also you can go in for any design improvement or any compromises if you want for example if your vehicle is going to run within a particular boundary for example any compound within the compound level run or it is going to run only in glaciers glaciers it is going to run only in deserts so based on that also you can do some sort of design compromises right so for that this this point is actually required for us next vehicle configuration whether your vehicle is going to be like fully electric or hybrid or it is going to be have it is going to have a long run or very short run or in this also you have more uh, more configurations like series series connected or parallel connected or it uh, your motor has to be like fixed in with as an hub or it will be like center axle so these many things are there comes under this vehicle configuration you need to fix with that and accordingly also you can go for your design right so next and the, this is your target that is maximum speed so what could be your maximum speed whether this this speed has to be achieved using a gearbox or not it is directly connected to the hub or it has a gear or not it has to the power has to be the rotation is transferred or not based upon that you you should design your structure of your motor and you should have the mechanical strength to the that is our our base, basic point that is based upon that we need to add some mechanical strength or not to your motor material so this is very much important next point is maximum torque okay so the torque is very very important aspect in case of an electrical vehicle so you need to have a high starting torque or low starting torque these things you need to first finalize it okay and based upon that you need to go in for type of motors also because we all know that each and every type of motor will have their own speed torque characteristics based on that we can go in for different types of configuration next as we are when we talk about uh, speed and uh, this thing here now we are coming with when when it comes to torque we are talking about power so what is that is maximum power is found simply at maximum speed so whenever you are achieving if you want to achieve a maximum power at maximum speed it has been achieved so based upon your speed rpm the power you need to uh, keep a point, uh, note on this, this thing also so whenever you are configure whenever you are fixing on to a motor right when especially in ev the what you are telling is that the rpm and power rating of your motor am i right or not so in which rpm it is running and at what power it is power it is delivering so this is very much important in the aspect design aspect of the motor coming to next point battery capacity this battery capacity totally we have like 10 considerations in this city the battery capacity means it directly does not influence our selection of motor or any design compromises we need to make in a motor but anyhow this is a consideration which has to be done for our general ev design next battery voltage here this indirectly influences our design how it influences that based upon the battery voltages and the inverter which we are going to use the conductor size may may be influenced or may not be influenced also that we know in here but this is also this can be given as a minimal importance that is based upon the battery voltage a simple logic you are going to use a conductor to deliver the battery voltage from that to a inverter and then to a motor so the conductor size which you are keeping inside your uh, motor right so that may be influencing that 
based on that you can do some design compromises on the conductor side for that you can consider this point as a next next gearbox and direct drive this thing we have discussed already already we have discussed like whether your motor is going to be of gearbox or a direct drive motor in order to reduce the rpm whether the rpm is directly going to feed the wheel or it is being fed through the gearbox so these things you need to take it into consideration finally the cost so obviously this is consumer point of view consumer point of view they are worried about the cost so considering that point also we, we in order to improve the performance or something like that we not we can uh, use a minimal uh, cost effective materials inside the motor so that is this cost again i am telling this cost also includes see for example if uh, we are manufacturing a motor for ev application so for uh, uh, we are doing r and d we are in, in, involving like uh, thousands of uh, employee for that and we are designing it and we are doing that it took for 3 months or 4 months and then it is getting failure again we are trying it no trials and no employees everything will be you may be manufacturing a motor cost of 10 rupees but thing is that the r and d cost everything has to be cannot be retrieved through some other source again it will be falling in the motor only so obviously because of the r and d cost and these things again the cost of the motor only is going to increase i i hope so you you can understand this point so any any trial you need to reduce it you need to reduce the trial and that there and that that position where we are going in for simulation type of uh, study in simulation itself we are correcting every points and then and before going into design we are also what we are going to do we are going to refer all the approval points that is in the approval the next gate gate number 2 you have an approval stage right in the end gate they are going to approve your design so first what we are going to do is that we are verifying with them we are going to their regulations their standards what is their need satisfying their needs only we are doing compromises in our design so if we are doing this what is going to happen is that we have to reduce this this cost only that is the r and d cost so for that only i was uh, very particular that we are we need to know about these what are the homolo- what is homologation what they do there and what are the standards we do follow what are, what what particular they are given in the standards why we need to maintain that so before getting into design why i want to go for it so this is the reason because when you go in for more iterations or more number of r and d again that is going to increase the cost of your motor only so in order to reduce that we need to go in uh, we have to be, uh, have a basic knowledge on these things right so again this is a simple uh, relation between a cost and weight ratio if you see here the mo- i have split the motor into motor core or lamination copper windings and uh, the magnet and housing for this if you take the percentage they are uh, given a percentage and weight uh, compare percentage comparison so if you see here all the weight and as the if you see here the weight is very less for a magnet but the cost is very much higher so why i why i am very particular about this is that here if you see the motor core weight is more but cost is very less so you need to understand this ratio also before designing where in which aspect i can increase the weight and which aspect i should not increase the weight because for minimum weight if you take a magnet if you are for a minimum weight itself you are getting a maximum cost so if you are in order to comp- in order to improve some other factor if you are going to keep your hands on magnet area you are, if you are increasing the area of magnet then ob- obviously your cost will be like at the peak so you need to know these things also okay so before design, while you are designing you need to keep these key points in your mind next basic requirements of a traction motor obviously optimal speed torque characteristic with operational constraints is required that is initial acceleration gradeability and maximum cruising speed with minimum power requirement is the basic requirement for any traction motor so constant it has to be operated in constant power region however the entire operation is not constant sir so it also goes up and down so these are the basic requirements so far fulfilled in case of traction motors but where you can where the roles can be played yes the roles where we can play is that the motor design optimization advancement in material sciences and electronics 
and control techniques by keeping your hands and doing researches on this you can come up with new types of motors with high efficiency and reliability of operation and now now not only now even for years this will be under like uh, this will be under uh, always welcome in the field of research that is less expensive material you need to use a cost effective that is if you are putting a material which is less cost it is obviously going to reduce the uh, product cost so this will be always open for you so working on materials working on design efficiencies these things are always open for traction motor requirements so we can always expect a opening on the field you see this is the performance evaluation traction motor this is if you see here or uh, the vehicle control unit is always about three management that is thermal management torque management and energy management okay and for all this these are the inputs that is drive cycle ambient temperature traction load and drive cycle traction load uphill performance vehicle performance calibration for energy management you require drive cycles and route planning so all this control management all this vehicle control unit is falling over your motor control performance that is motor, directly to your the performance of your motor so these controllers are involved to always monitor your main motor drive so if a motor is or any motor is uh, designed to a perfect uh, condition to satisfy with these inputs right so the role of vehicle control unit is reduced so this is what we are trying to work on design improvement so for that aspect only we are taking this into consideration this is why we are taking this driving cycle also for consideration in designing a motor so yes coming to our own now our topic that is design of traction motor to design a motor what you need actually if you take the variables there are two types of variables that is input variables uh, and output variables the input variables are generally called as independent and output variables are dependent variables the in independent variables has the dimension winding turns and magnetic material that is materials used next the output is the torque current efficiency temperature see if you are going in for either you can go in with first fixing your dimensions and accordingly you are achieving your uh, output variables and then again correcting your dimensions to achieve this torque or else what you can do is that you can fix with the torque current efficiency and you do have some design formula by implementing those formulas into that you can achieve certain dimensions and finally you can uh, achieve your final design like that like that also if you, you can do actually speaking the proper methodology will go on fixing with the output variables and arriving at the input variables but thing is that since the design is very for example if you take ev itself they give a certain allocated point for your motor drive because it it involves the complete architecture of your ev so electrical if you are taking a four wheeler you you are always worried about your center of gravity and these things these aspects and all so they give a particular point at at that particular point only you need to fix your uh, motor so that that for that particular uh, boundary itself you you are always forced to make a motor so with that dimensions how to achieve the start and these things for either by induct, uh, showing some design improvement or increasing the turns or using different sorts of materials so that is the challenge faced by a especially the motor design engineers yes so these are the uh, this is what the design of traction motor involves next if you see in which flow we need to design first as i said always an application requirement for which application you are going to design always when you start a motor design you always start from the center point that is from inner point and you need to reach the outer point that is first rotor what type of rotor are you going to use now here we are worried about permanent magnet materials motor itself that is the latest thing we are considering here as a bldc motor itself so i'm just design flow of bldc itself i'm going here so what which type of rotor type we have to use and in which what type of magnet grade we have to use this knowledge is very much important because for every magnet beam as a electrical engineer or somebody else so we are worried about like motor performance only we need not have, we are not having we have always a less knowledge on 
materials so we need to have some knowledge about materials which we are using that all because the difference in material will also influence the performance of motor so we need to have a brief knowledge about the materials which we are going to use there also and finally the number of poles and according to number of poles the number of theta slots and faces which you have to fix a rough size we need to come into existence and then we have to fix in with the air gap after which we are getting into we need to determine the flux per pole ratio and then the stator lamination dimension number of conductors wire size resistance and coil inductance calculate the performance and temperature output performance like temperature rise current density flux density demagnetization of magnet everything has to be cross verified if it is not reached again we need to go in for the first step so this is the flow chart which we are we need to follow through of uh, to design a traction motor so now we are going into like electromagnetics so what why i have kept this uh, slide is that now we are going to see the performance of the motor not in terms of like output parameters like in which speed it is going to rotate or in which torque it is going to rotate that thing we are not going to, we are not going to see instead we are going to see the electromagnetic behavior two electromagnetic results only we are coming into conclusion like this motor can withstand this much speed or this much torque or this thing so what is this basically is that it is a simple concept that is a uh, electrical energy is always converted into a mechanical energy in case of a motor similarly a mechanical energy is being converted into a electrical energy in case of a generator so the conversion of electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical as a small subsystem that is called as magnetic system so whatever voltage and current which you are feeding into a motor is being converted as a speed and torque at the output parameters of the motor so in between that you have some magnetic field magnetic core and air gap which generates uh, which generates the magnetic fluxes and flux linkages so based on that only your electrical energy is being converted into a mechanical energy so whatever we are going to see the performance analysis over here is based within this magnetic system only and not the mechanical output here so this is what uh, we need i need to make clear before going into this design next what type of simulation tool we need to use for the performance that is actually for electromagnetic simulation you have n number of multi physics tools so what which tool we are going to use today you have a n number of tools like console ansys uh, magnet every flux many so uh, many tools are there but thing is that today we are going in to see the tool called magnet why we are fixing into this tool because since this is this we have planned as an hands on training a trial version was easily available for this tool and it is also shareable on the online flat platform so we are going in for this tool for today's session so what is basically to have a brief idea about magnetics uh, magnet software here you can design all ac machines and dc machines and they are they they also have a flexibility to design the actuators solenoids loud speakers transformers sensors recording it everything they do 2d as well as 3d models we have to create a 2d as well as 3d models and from which you can get a results on static as well as transient results okay they they do opt a finite element mesh method to have a results uh, to provide the results over there so what are the results you can see here the total magnetic stored energy and core energy force and torque on each body flux linking each coil ohmic losses in each conducting component iron losses current in each coil so these are the results you can get from a magnet software and if you see as i said in the previous slide you cannot see any the input parameters like uh, dimensions or these things as well as the output parameters like torque current voltage you cannot see anywhere in this result instead you will be seeing it in the terms of losses and flux linking the voltages and the magnetic energy stored and these things based on that you will be equating to your voltages and currents and speeds and torque right so what are the steps to be followed using this tool first you need to open a blank model and then you need to build a geometry model that is you need to set a drawing space 
you need to draw a sketch of complete layout a cad type of layout of the motor and then you need to keep fill in all the materials after filling in all the materials you need to create coils that is winding the materials has to be converted into a coil and then after creating the coil you need to fix on to your many boundary conditions okay so if you want to give any boundary conditions you can give it right and then for simulation work to fire to get a fine results over the simulation you have to customize the mesh option you can if you, you can customize the mesh option or you can opt in for your default mesh option itself and then finally you need to solve and you can view the results in the form of plot graph and animation finally if your results is not uh, up to the mark again you can go in for a design improvement so these are the steps to be followed using this tool so before going in for today's session we have a pre request that is you i have given here a youtube link as well as a ipp paper okay so in this youtube link what what you can find is that you can find the basic tutorial about this tool and how to design a bldc motor using this tool right and in this paper what i have quoted here what it involves is that it in uh, this paper so i can show you the paper if you want so yeah i i i hope so I, this paper is visible to you am i right or not is that visible yeah it's sir it's visible okay yeah it's visible so here if you see this uh, this is my paper only actually it is a very old paper here in this you can see a complete design procedure how to design a bldc motor through equation okay so step by step design procedure will be there so you can you can have this is also this as also your uh, basic uh, base paper so that it will be helpful for you to design it, it is nothing but see no equation was framed by me it's on literature my job is to frame according to the procedure step by step algorithm that's it so in this some something some considerations like this value can be of this range is given by me apart from that everything is based on the literature only so coming back to our uh, so these things only has been given as pre request to this uh before getting into this session you can also view it not not necessarily now itself 